Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of the appeal process for Robert Sylvester Kelly. And you are now listening to the We Can Fly in July series, where we give hope on this appeal process and the highs and lows that go with it. So, you know, yesterday we had a good, some good news come through that the appeal was processed. Well, now we have an issue today. That's why I say there's highs and there's lows. And then there's, you know, kind of flat line until something else happens. So it's going to always be, you know, high and low and then nothing. And then all of a sudden, a great deal of something happens in this process. But yesterday I found on the docket that um, as of July 7th, 2022, the Honorable Lewin Weber set a motion for a protective order. And we're going to go over that today. Um, a protective order is a legal document in which a judge orders someone to follow specific conditions of behavior. That is, tell someone things that they must or must not do. So, um... And police can make immediate arrest if they have reason to believe that these conditions have been violated. So that's what the protection order is. Um, so I'm going to go over the docket. United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois, Eastern Division. United States of America versus Robert Sylvester Kelly, A.K.R. Kelly, Daryl McDavid and Milton Brown, A.K.A. June Brown. On number 19 CR 567, Judge Harry D. Lewinweber. Protective order governing court proceedings. Now in this order, upon the motion of the government and pursuant to Title 18, United States Code Section 3771A, it is hereby ordered. One, at trial and during pretrial and post-trial proceedings in this case, the victim witnesses referred to as minor one, three, four, five, and six in the superseding indictment shall be permitted to testify using pseudonyms of their first names only. Number two, at trial and during pretrial and post-trial proceedings in this case, the victim witnesses referred to as minor one, three, four, five, and six and the superseding indictment shall be referred to by pseudonyms of their first names only. Number three, at trial and during pretrial and post-trial proceedings in this case, minor one's mother shall be permitted to testify using a pseudonym and shall only be referred to by a pseudonym. Number four, at trial and during pretrial and post-trial proceedings in this case, the following information about minor one, minor three, minor four, five, and minor six, minor one's mother, and individual D shall not be disclosed. Addresses, full names of family members, or exact places of employment. Number five, all documents that disclose the first or last name of minor one, minor three, minor four, minor five, minor six, and minor one's mother must be filed under seal. All publicly filed documents shall refer to those witnesses by a generic name such as minor one or minor one's mother. Number six, this protective order supplements the previously interprotective order governing discovery docket number 53. All of the provisions of the, of the protective order governing discovery remain in place. Number seven, nothing contained in this order shall preclude any party from applying to this court for further relief or for modification of any provision hereof. So it is entered Harry Lewin Weber, District Judge, United States District Court, Northern District of Illinois on 7-7-2022. To me, it sounds like they're saying, so let's go all the way back to the end. It says nothing contained in this order shall preclude so what is the termination? What is preclude? 
What does the meaning of preclude? To make impossible by. To make impossible by ne necessary consequences. Any part from applying to this court for further relief or modification of any provision herein. So they're saying that they're actually saying that the protective order is there to protect the minors, their children. Um, I mean, their <laughs> the minors, their parents or anyone who would be testifying at this point. So that's just a formal formality that they do in the court proceedings in this type of trial with, with uh, sexual situations. So it's nothing big, it's nothing to worry about. It is just the formality. Now we're gonna look at Honorable Harry D. Lewinweber and who he is. He's a senior judge in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. So in January, um, Lewin, well, in June, Lewin Weber celebrated his 81st birthday, and this was done in 2017. So 18, 19, 21, 22. So he celebrated his 85th birthday. This year, he also celebrates 31st year as a federal judge in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. So now it would be 36 years, 35 years. So to say that he has a successful career as a legal professional is an understatement, according to the Federal Lawyer article from September 2017. One of the best ex uh, qualities exemplifies Judge Lewinweber is his passion for the law. This passion is best demonstrated by his relentless work ethic. Although Judge Lynn Weber assumed senior status June 3rd, 2002, he has never taken a reduced caseload, which all judges who assume senior statuses may elect to do. Instead, he maintains a full caseload and remains as dedicated to his work on the bench now as he has for the last 35 years. Honoring an individual like Judge Lynn Weber is not a difficult thing to do. He embodies all of the great qualities that many federal judges possess. Judge Lewin Weber is a hardworking, intelligent, responsible, and pragmatic man. These are qualities that have contributed to his success as both a lawyer and a federal judge. Most people who know Judge Lewin Weber well will tell you that his most impressive quality is the calm temperament and the genuine care he has for those around him. So the early years. So Lewin Weber was born in Juliet, Illinois, he graduated from University of Notre Dame in 1959 and earned his law degree from the University of Chicago in 1962. After graduating law school, Judge Lewin Weber stayed close to his roots and began his legal career in private practice in Juliet. He quickly established himself as a successful attorney. Only one year after his law school graduation, Judge Lewin Weber served as a part-time city attorney on behalf of the city of Juliet. In 1968, he was special prosecutor for Will County, Illinois. Later, he was special counsel for the village of Bolingbrook and the Will County Forest Preserve. Thereafter, he continued his commitment to public service as a member of the Illinois General Assembly from 1973 to 1983. After this, with the legislature, he continued his career in private practice at the law firm Dunn, Lewin Weber, and Dunn. He got a call from the president in the winter of 1985. It was just another day at the office for Lewin Weber when he learned his career as a successful lawyer in Juliet could change forever. In fact, Lewin Weber was at Montgomery Ward's corporate headquarters preparing to take a deposition for a lawsuit he was defending for the major retailer. Shortly after he arrived at Montgomery Ward, the receptionist informed him that his office had called and wanted him to call back immediately. Lewin Weber did, as he was instructed to learn what was so urgent. His secretary informed him that the President of the United States had called and asked him to return his call. At that point, Lewin Weber's secretary gave him President Ronald Reagan's direct number. File, filled with disbelief and excitement, Lewin Weber direct dialed the President of the U.S. 
To his surprise, President Reagan answered and asked whether Leuenweber was willing to give Reagan permission to commission Leuenweber as a federal district judge for the Northern District of Illinois. Ecstatic, Leuenweber gave the president his formal permission and hung up the phone. When asked what he did immediately after his conversation with the president, Leuenweber explained that he proceeded to take the deposition. A few months later, Judge Lewin Weber was nominated officially by President Reagan to become a federal district judge in the Northern District of Illinois. Shortly thereafter, Lewin Weber was confirmed by the Senate and began his career as a federal district judge for the Northern District of Illinois in January 1986. Career on the bench. The rest is history, so they say. It is remarkable that Judge Lewin Weber was dedicated over 30 years of his career and his life, hmm, 30 years, to the federal judiciary. He has presided over a plethora of different cases, ranging from prostitution cases, formerly a federal crime, to terrorism ch charges to patent litigation. When asked why he has never elected to take a reduced case load, Judge Lewin Weber is likely to tell you that he truly loves his job and fears that he would be bored with the reduced amount of work. In addition to maintaining his full caseload, Judge Lewin Weber also elects to preside over all discovery, motions, and settlement conferences when possible, as opposed to referring these matters to the magistrate judge. This is the judge's preference because he wants to be in, as involved with all of his cases as he can. So the Chambers family. So Judge Lewin Weber's passion for his work emanates throughout his careers. Indeed, the people Judge Lewin Weber surrounds himself with are an integral part of his success on the bench. Those close to Lewin Weber will tell you that one of his best qualities is the way he values his family and treats those around him with the utmost respect. This is obvious in both his personal and professional life and is perhaps his biggest secret to his continued success. Lewin Weber has had the same personal assistant for more than 20 years. His courtroom deputy has assisted him for more than 30 years. Both are critical to the well-oiled machine that is Judge Lewin Weber's chambers. Although both his assistant and deputy may have had aspirations of early retirement or may have longed for a reduced caseload when the judge assumed senior status, both would tell you that Lewin Weber is the best boss a person could ask for and they will always be willing to work hard for him. Since he was appointed to the bench, Lewin Weber was hired uh, Lewin Weber has hired his law clerks to serve one-year terms with alternate, alternating start dates in September and January. While this may seem like a short time to become acclimated to the job and to the judge, most of his clerks will tell you that there was no choice but to learn quickly, since Judge Lewin Weber's docket and the judge himself never slow down. Somehow, Judge Lewin Weber finds a way to manage it all. He travels with his wife, spends time with his children and grandchildren, gets to know all of his clerks personally, knows about current affairs, politics, sports, all while immersing himself in his cases and the nuances of the law. As a, cl a law clerk, this is nothing short of inspiring. In addition to the incredible amount of legal knowledge and practical experience Judge Lynn Weber's law clerks gain, they also get something even more meaningful. They become part of Judge Lynn Weber's chambers family. Every year, Judge Lynn Weber's clerks celebrate his birthday by inviting the judge's former clerks and members of Lynn Weber's family to a Chicago Cubs game, the judge's favorite Chicago sports team. The turnout is remarkable. The judge's clerks from his early years on the bench often lament about the new clerks not even being born when the first worker was the judge. Watching Judge Lewin Weber interact with all of his clerks and reminisce about old cases or old war stories is heartwarming. Last year marked uh, Lewin Weber's 30th anniversary on the bench. To celebrate, now this was again written in 2017, September, by the Federal Lawyer Review, a special edition. 
So last year marked Lou and Weber's 30th anniversary on the bench to celebrate the momentous occasion of the judge longtime assistant, along with the help of Lou and Weber's wife, planned a surprise party for the judge. Guests included former clerks, colleagues, and federal judges. As a gift, all the judges' clerks were asked to write about their fondest memory of the clerkship and the judge. The memory submitted all the clerks, young and old, described the great legal professional person that is Judge Lynn Weber. One clerk wrote, I can unequivocally say without hesitation that I could not imagine a better way to have spent my first year as an attorney than the opportunity I had to serve as a clerk in your chambers. The myriad lessons you provided have carried into my practice. You did not overtly offer these lessons. Rather, I learned from you by observing how you work how you inserted practicality and reasonableness into the law, regardless of how contentious or complex the situation may have been. Another clerk echoes similar sentiments, noting that Lewin Weber is humble and quiet. He always treats everyone in chambers with respect and always w w with them like, and always talks with them like they are his peers. And more than anything, he loves three things, his family, the work he does, and the Cubs. Another clerk wrote, he is a great judge and a great boss because he believes in the abilities of the people who work with him, which in turn inspires his clerks and his staff to work hard for him. The consistency with which all the clerks remarked of Judge Lewin Weber's character and their clerkship experiences further demonstrates just how exceptional Judge Lewin Weber is. A story that most Judge Lewin Weber's clerks recall is when the judge first hired them and took them and told them that their clerkship with him would be the best job they ever had. Most clerks would agree that Judge Lewin Weber was correct when he told them that. However, what Lewin Weber may not realizes that the job is not the best job because of the experience, the access, or the excitement. Instead, it is the best job because each clerk has the privilege to get to know Judge Lewin Weber as a federal judge and a friend. Thank you, Lewin Weber, for all your services to the to the continue on page 48, okay, to the bench for your inspiring work ethic, passion for the law, and for giving me the best job I'll ever have. So, off the bench, he had volunteers that worked with him. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you about Loon Weber, because I wanted to get a, a feel of who he is as a judge, as a federal judge, so I'm assuming that in his practice and in his years of experience being 85, I don't know if he knows the difference between the genre and the generational qualities of music versus, you know, baseball or, you know, and I hope that he takes into consideration, you know, what has taken place over the years with uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly and, um, it's going to be it's 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 going to be emotional i think i think this is going to be emotional but he was the he was the guy who who um set the protection order in place to protect you know those people who are coming in to testify and you know this is going to be an emotional time but again robert sylvester kelly has to face the music as a man and he has to prove and show that this was not as it as it looks to us so this is his show now this is you know his opportunity to express himself based upon all of the allegations and everything that's there so i believe him and uh, uh, jennifer bonjean is doing their job to get him prepared for august the 15th and I just wanted to share that with you. I want to keep this short and simple because I do have a three o'clock live that is going on today, July the 13th, 2022. And it's just a rendition of our meet and greet up in, in um, Michigan and how the wonderful people I met. And then I have a backstory. So, you know, it has nothing to do with the appeal. I just had to 
promote this out now so it can be updated information for the Appeal TV. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. I will make this um, an immediate video that's open to you. But then again, I might not. I might wait because then that way it could be a premiere and then we can sit down and we can talk together. But um, it, it just all depends. I could go on tonight. I'll make it go on tonight at 6 p.m. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.